Well, Dr. Adam Bona is a security and safety expert, has joined us in the studio for a conversation on the back of uh, that story. Doctor, grateful for your time with us on Midday Live. Uh, the call by the IGP is a laudable one, is it not? Yeah, it's a very laudable one. Mm. The truth is that uh, over, over the years, some of us have been calling for, uh, you know, kind of a police complaints, uh, you know, authority or commission. Mm. But if you notice what came out of the Ayawaso West, com you know, Ayawaso West Wagon Commission report, uh, you know, recommended it. And, the, you know, the executive mm -hmm. actually said, no, they weren't going to put such a thing in place. If that was in place, then it makes it easy for citizens to, apart from posting misconduct of police officers on social media mm -hmm. and attempting to call, they would file complaints at this, uh, you know, independent uh, commission. Okay. But unfortunately, because that is not in place, uh, you know, citizens have resorted to the easiest means of, uh, you know, checking the police officers and checking, you know, call them uh, rogue police officers by filming them and putting them on social, on social media, media mm -hmm. which I think has been very effective. But it can only be effective if you have a very effective police administration. Once there you don't have a very effective police administration, then because it is really not a policy, mm. uh, you know, or you call it a regulation, uh, to say everything that goes on social media must be investigated, and you know, uh, if someone has to be reprimanded or punished, the person is punished. Mm. So for me, it is commendable, but uh, you know, I want to believe that the IGP sh and his management should go further to put in measures as is done, you know, with regards to numbers for people to call okay. and file complaints mm. you know i think it's, it's very good because right. the police cannot supervise themselves mm. it's simply not possible they simply cannot supervise themselves so that was a concern that uh, some people had that if if the police was was investigating itself at its staff in such instances a sort of you know, reduces the quality of investigations, the fortrightness the police service should come with. But uh, beyond that, during investigations of such uh, unprofessional uh, conduct among personnel, uh, what format would you want such investigations to take? For instance, uh, depending on a police officer was caught, a drunken police officer was caught, I'm sure you've seen the video and viewers might have seen mm -hmm. the video, drunk and, you know, couldn't walk properly yeah. and all that. It depends. He could have been under the influence of something. It doesn't necessarily mean it could be aquatation or something. Mm. could be under the influence. You need to test him. Or maybe he's taking some medication. I'm not, you know, Holding by any brief. stretch of my yes. imagination mm. saying this is what he took. But from what I observed, he might have taken something that, you know, got him intoxicated. But mine is that we want to see a situation where uh, if you know the Aswansi 7, that's one to seven where police, you know, po police officers literally shot and killed abled, uh, you know, men and put firearms by them to say they were literally robbers. were robbers. Mm -hmm. And the, an independent committee that was put together by the interior committee vindicated these, you know, actually cleared them and said they were never armed robbers. So such committees, when these things happen, should be put in place. But it depends on... Uh, they, because if you look at a drunken police or someone who looks intoxicated, it would be difficult to say put in a committee to investigate. Okay. But before I entered here, uh, I read something on social media that says, uh, you know, a divisional, you know, either a unit in Takwa has brutalized somebody and beaten the person. And this person, you know, might end up still going back to the police to report. And like I'm saying, it would take, call it a, a certain good police administration. Mm -hmm to ensure that there is swift investigations and reprimand and punishment for rogue officers. Without but another, Yes, without compromise. But another administration could come in and it is free for all. You and I know before this Dampari administration, there were other administrations that were there. And, you know, it was, you know, things were happening. And mm -hmm. some of us kept talking about it. And so uh, Dampari is not going to be the IGP forever. forever. Mm -hmm. So let's put in adequate measures. Let's put in policy, regulation, that some of us, the citizens, can you know refer to. But as we speak, when a police officer stops you, it happened to, what's the name, Omar Osanda, mm. you start filming and they get agitated, some of them. 
But I would want to see a policy, a directive from the IGP and his PUMA, that does a police management board, to say citizens are free to film police officers when they are out there working. Mm -hmm. Mine is that it will serve as a check so that if a police officer puts his hand to take two Ghana cities bribe, I mean, if I'm in the trotro, I pull my phone and he will stop. But if there is no any policy directive in that manner mm -hmm. and they are doing it, and you attempt to film, he could beat you. And all other persons who want to film are likely to be beaten. Therefore, there will not be any evidence. Right. Mm. The Dampar administration is doing very well with regards to swiftly dealing with these matters. But like I said, he will not be the IGP forever. Mm. Let's put in more regulation to check rogue police officers, police officers who you know, have outlived their usefulness True. in the service. Mm. Such that even in the absence of some elements, uh, some, if you like, good people in the police service, because the system is there, yes. it can still work effectively. Let's talk about the uh, 6.1 million police emergency medical intervention fund. It is to provide uh, immediate financial assistance for the treatment of police officers who get injured in the line of duty. How crucial is that? Very crucial. Myself and my team from the Institute of Security Safety Policy Research, we are conducting a research amongst police officers to determine how police officers feel about themselves. Mm. And there is, uh, you know, a question, you know, among the survey uh, questionnaires, you know, questions that says that I am satisfied with, uh, you know, welfare packages by the police administration. And it looks like uh, everybody, most of the respondents, even though we are not done, we, have, we are not done with collecting, uh, you know, uh, call it a uh, getting, we are not done with the work. You can see most respondents who are answering to that actually saying no. They are not. So they are not. Mm. So this is so crucial because then if you ask 10 out of probably 10 police officers, they will tell you that their welfare for some time, not today, has been very poor. And some of them fall ill. There is a police officer who, I think he was a dispatch rider, got mm -hmm. into an accident and it turned into, I don't know how that incident, you know, ended up. Once they are confident that if they put themselves in line of fire and probably they are, uh, they, they, they are shot, mm -hmm. the police administration has put in enough, probably, insurance measures, adequate measures to, tr to ensure that uh, they and their families are taken care of. Okay. Police officers who die in line of duty, who are asked in most barracks, after, is it three months or so, your family, the families are kicked out of the okay. uh, barracks. And mm. so you know, police officers will go and when armed robbers are shooting, depending on which administration is in place, they themselves, the police officers will, will advise run. advise themselves. Yes. Right. Uh, Doc, very briefly before you go, 2022, the police administration, what reforms would you want to see in the year? I, I want to see a more uh, research-based policing. Okay. It shouldn't be... Uh, you know, that Buga Buga policing we have seen. When I say Buga Buga policing, where depending on the situation, uh, you know, the police respond. It should be, uh, you know, research that is pointing to what could happen now and the future. Mm. But we... A lot of intelligence gathering. A, a lot of mm. intelligence gathering. They have a police research unit. I'm, I don't know what they are doing, but I haven't seen any research that they have published. Okay. I want to see... A situation where I think the police PR is doing very well. Mm -hmm. We want to see more police officers getting out there and the way they look, the way, you know, they are psyche, you know, training and retraining. These are some of the things. I think the, uh, the recruitment is still ongoing. We want to see as quickly as possible the 5,000 officers okay. go through so that mm. this is another 5,000. So the numbers uh, so in terms of citizen police ratio, ratio. will come down. Mm, right. Uh, Doc, our, our time is up. But uh, there's a concern that the image the service is creating on social media, if you like, could be different from the reality. Is that a valid concern? Well, it depends on where you stand. And just like I told you, among the police officers, because you see, when you poll, when, when you survey citizens who are not police officers, mm. and you survey police officers who are not citizens, uh, who are not, uh, you know, who are not ordinary citizens, you might get it different. And so, per the research we are conducting among police officers, okay. uh, no, it looks like it is a reality. Right. You know, police officers, there's a question that says that uh, I am satisfied as a police officer now than before. And most respondents, we are not done. Most respondents 
who have answered to that particular question, about 95% mm. of them says yes. It tells you that they now believe in themselves better than. But another research will be conducted to determine how the citizens see them. It will be difficult to just look at what is going on on okay. social media mm. and conclude that mm. oh, people are happy because you go to most of some police stations and we have very rogue district commanders. I mean, there are some regional commanders yeah. I know are not doing okay. well. You know, mm. so I think a lot would have to be done in terms of research okay. to determine uh, the real situation. Doc, we'd like to thank you so much. Wish you all the best in the research. We can't wait to have a copy of the findings. Dr. Adam Bona is a security and a safety analyst speaking there. But I